good evening. As I say evening, last time I said afternoon, but right now it's definitely evening. We are here with a match for Gozu League Division 3 preliminaries, and uh, I'm still loading in because there was a, smi a small minor patch, so everybody loads in a bit slower. Well, I do anyway, after an, uh, a restart of my Dota. Doesn't matter. We are here with a game. We just saw uh, Jackpot winning from... Uh, <laughs> from TFE in a very, 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 very long game of 90 minutes. Let's see if they can do it faster this time, or if Beyond Godlike can take it instead, because this is the last game uh, for these preliminaries. What? They changed it? They changed their banners. Oh, that's just so lame. Okay, so I will change the overlays. That was the change. I will just, uh, wait a second, wait a second. So yeah, they changed their banners. That's the that's that's the difference. So my catalyst mode overlay is not working anymore. Doesn't matter. We are here with a game for Ghost League Division Three uh, to decide which one of these uh, teams will actually make it through Division Three because this is a preliminary. This is a qualifier. Last round of the day. It's just the best set of one. Only one team will make it through. Only one team will be victorious for that spot. Well, actually, there's actually four teams in total because the whole preliminaries has four teams in total but from this team it's only one so you know it's just uh, one game one victor one goes league division three competitor and for now we have I'm sorry I'm still distracted by the new banners because it's like the top 16 teams in the world compete they didn't really add anything new it's just now it's uh, horizontal you don't have to read it upside down anymore well to the side rather doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, we have some bands already. We have a Darkseer, Lake, and Lashrek. Lone. Well, I was gonna say Lone Druid, but it's actually an Age of Prophet and a Broodmother banned out. I was gonna say Naga Siren is doing, but she got banned out here. So, uh, let's see what we're gonna see picked up as the first pickup for the team that we tinker. have seen playing today. They pick up a Tinker. Uh, we have seen Jackpot playing all three games so far, with uh, Beyond Godlike being the one that. Uh, is a new for us, so we're gonna have ki have to keep an extra eye on them to see what kind of strategy they would like to play. We have seen for Jackpot, we have seen them liking a carry uh, played by Sky and just with with some pressure. Well, well, pressure. They want some team fight. They want late game insurance and they want counter push. Both games, they weren't really that pressured on having pushing power for their own, which might change now that they have a Tinker, which is of course mostly counter push than pushing itself. I mean he can clear creep waves fairly fast but to kill off a tower he's maybe not the right target. Uh, we have a Chen and a Rubik picked up by Beyond Godlike so they have a jungle secured. I have to just point out for Jackpot uh, they did have a jungle here on the previous game. We might see the same thing if they go for Lone Druid again for example. Which is still on the pool and that worked out great for them in the previous game. Well I say great but it was a hundred and nine hundred and well sorry it was a 19 minute game so I'm not sure if that's what they want to go for again. Uh, but at least uh, it's a hero that doesn't have a lot of ultimates that are worth stealing for, because okay, you can steal the bear, Five but seconds. the bear won't have any items. Stuff like that. So Rubik uh, would be not too powerful against the Lone Druid, so they still might want to pick that up. They have got a solo lane in their Tinker. So still have every option open with the Chen and the Forest. Rubik might be solo lane, might be support, so beyond God, like, really not giving anything away. They, they can still go any direction with this. Well, apart from that we can say, okay, Chen is gonna be in the jungle. That's what we can safely say. But let's see. They're taking their time, going into the bonus time for this one. I'm kinda, well... I mean, they don't want to pick up the Enigma to go into the jungle because the Rubik is there. Maybe that's what they're discussing. Oh, they want to have Sky on their Morphling. We saw them win the first game with that, that we saw with them. Uh, Morphling, uh, we played by Sky, did a good job as well. Did a good job, for sure. Let's see what the other heroes... That, that also means that there's probably not going to be a lone druid, though. Uh, we might see an Invoker. He is still on the pool. Morphling could be on a dual lane as well as on a tri lane. So either they secure a support or they secure another solo lane. Or they get the enchantress. Venom but no, the support it is. 
Solid support at that. We're gonna see probably at least a uh, Enchantress ban out from uh, from Beyond Godlike. But let's see what their next pick is gonna be. I mean, they're so far dealing with the Tinker and the Venomizer, both heroes that can push fairly fast. I'm oh, sorry, fairly hard, or counter push rather. Sorry, I don't know if you hear that, but that's loud no noise outside my window. Um, but uh, are they gonna get some extra counter push? A solo lane, maybe in the form of a Beastmaster, could be a good hero to pick up here. Doesn't really give anything away that all too much. Doesn't say if Rubik is gonna be solo or support. Could still go either way, unless they're afraid that their carry is gonna be banned out by Jackpot and they pick up their carry instead, like a Chaos Knight or something. I mean, Chaos Knight is a, de is a carry, and he can carry earlier than Morphling. Okay, Morphling later on will be better than a uh, than a Chaos Knight, but Chaos Knights. They're just uh they're just ready to fight earlier. Oh my god. Team ban. I'm amazing. I didn't know I was gonna get that one right, but you know, woohoo. I like being right. I I I was told that I shouldn't say that all too often that I should be happy about being right, but I haven't said that in ages, so I just wanna point out I'm happy I'm right. Radiant anyway. So they pick up their carry, pick up their Chaos Knight. Uh I just explained why it's just a good hero to have. And a good one for the Morphling as well. It's just a lot of burst damage. Uh, and pushing power in that as well. So a good one to have. We have a... Uh, well, the same thing happens. I mean, last time we saw... Last game even. We saw Jackpot banning out the Shadow Demon as well as the Wisp. When they were facing a Chaos Knight. And of course there's a lot of combinations possible with the Chaos Knight. It's not only the Wisp, Shadow Demon or the Age of Deparation. And there goes the Enchantress. But it's also, for example, the Lina. Lina Chaos Knight is a pretty solid... Um, solid combination as well and uh, you would basically pick that up if the Lashrak is already banned out which is the case and there goes the Tidon to ban out as well as the Lone Druid so we won't see those in the game and let's see what the support is that's gonna be uh, well actually Rubik could still be the support we I keep forgetting that we don't know what Rubik is gonna do yet we don't know that We'll see that with the next pick. Or we won't. Or they pick up a solo lane, leaving us to guess for the last one. Ten seconds remaining. That could actually be. Because they don't have to be afraid that there's going to be a support stolen from them. Well, maybe, maybe they have to if they're going to go for a try lane. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Wind runner there's the Windrunner. Solo lane for them. Radiant team pick. So yeah, I was already uh, I was already thinking about uh, about the, the the radiant team earlier. So we were expecting still a solo lane coming off from the dire team. I mean, they that's what they need. There's the solo lane. That's gonna be a death prophet. That's gonna be a lot of pushing power coming out from the radiant team. And let's see how they're gonna deal with that. Maybe well, they need some extra counter push. I think. Well, they have of course the tinker, which is a good hero to have. Are they gonna have an Earthshake or some team fight? Maybe a Sand King? Because they don't have that many direct stuns, like none. We have a Shackle, that's it. But they need some stuns. I mean, they're up first the Telekinesis, first the Reality Rift, first the Chaos Bolt. And maybe if Chen has a creep, that's a lot of stuns as well. Five seconds remaining. So, they need some, some sort of stun. They need something. Because only a shackle. Oh, that's gonna be painful. Radiant team and and Lich is, uh, don't get me wrong, Lich is a good combination with the Morphling. You can the knife arm and everything, but the lack of stuns is is gonna be dangerous. But we'll see how that turns out. Actually, we'll see how that turns out. I mean, you can you can counter that with a lot of. Uh, a lot of items, I mean, just the size of vices and stuff like that. And of course, Tinker, if he gets a size of vice, that basically counts as a zillion size of, size of vices if he has the mana pool to rearm every time and just sheep everybody. Let's see, last pick. We'll determine is Rubik is gonna be, uh, yeah, Rubik is gonna be a support with the Chaos Knight Templar Assassin. Wow! We have such a painful lineup coming out from Beyond God. Like, they have got mid game presence like no other. They have got the Templar Assassin as soon as she's level 6. As soon as she is, uh, has got a blink dagger, she will be so painful. 
and we're gonna see a solo lane for her, a solo lane for the Death Prophets, and a dual lane for the Chaos Knight. That's my expectations, anyway. And it is... I mean, Chaos Knight, as soon as he's level 8 to, to 11, he is gonna be really painful as well, and it is just Im unimaginable. We're gonna see how well they're gonna execute it, though, because I've been saying that in a couple of previous games as well. Team play is just very important in these kind of matches, because... Um, that is something that, you know, it's it's starting teams, well, sort of starting teams. It would, I mean, it's Division 3 for a reason. So, they they ha maybe they like that experience of team play, and team play is what could could potentially keep uh, keep Jackpot alive here. But we'll, we'll see, we'll see how it goes, we'll see how lanes are going to be. Uh, for now, I am going to introduce you, Beyond Godlike. We have Baby playing the Rubik on the top lane, supporting the Chaos Knight, who is going to be played by x -Nut. Uh, on the Chaos Knight in the top lane, in the middle lane. Uh, so far we have the Templar Assassin, she will be there, played by CBS. Uh, we're gonna have a Chen that's gonna be playing a support, is gonna be warding. He is gonna be played by my mom is my number one fan. That's just cute. And uh, we're gonna be on the bottom lane, we're gonna see the Death Pearl being played by Couch. He's gonna be by himself, gonna be having a solo lane versus the Windrunner who's being played once again by Orion. We have seen Orion playing the solo side lanes so far for Jackpot the entire evening. Uh, we have Luck, he is a standing for Jackpot, he will be playing the Lich, he will be denying a creep um, for the Windrunner and then go uh, elsewhere. We have the Tinker, he is being played by Eat, and he will be in the mid lane. We have the top lane, who is a Morphling and a Venomancer. Uh, Venomancer being played by uh, Cymac and uh, Morphling once again, being played by Sky. Not quite sure where Lich will go, he might be going towards the mid lane as well. Um, to the knife farm for the Templar Assassin. I mean, they have got a Venomancer already, which is a pretty good counter towards the Templar Assassin. Just have to point that out. Even though they're not in the same lane, we might see them rotate. I mean, uh, the reason that is, in case you're wondering why that is uh, the case, um, Venomancer's attacks are all damage over time, and that will take off the refraction from the Templar Assassin, basically in a matter of seconds. And there we have it is back, so we'll, we'll be able to... Uh, to see how it's gonna go, to see how these lanes are gonna be like, because that's gonna be the main thing um, for the well, it's gonna be the main thing for the the radiant stage uh, side mostly. I mean, up until level six, they have to n well, they don't really have to win their lane, but they kind of have to uh, not lose their lane. If you, yeah, if you know what I mean, it's it's they they just have to make it to all their levels. For Templar Assassin is going to be level 6, for Death Prophet is going to be level 6, for Chaos Knight is going to be level 10, sort of, or level 8, 10 or 8, 11, something like that, depends on what, what level he wants to leave his lane for. But they just, and for Chen level 6 of course, uh, for the Dire team, winning delays isn't as important either. I mean, they have the Tinker, but they just have to get the Tinker staying alive. That is their main problem. If the Tinker is alive and he's gonna go for March of the Machines, there's no way they can push in. Well, there is, of course, a way. They have to kill off the Tinker first. But it is gonna be a lot harder than it was before. And he is already going for a fast bottle, by the looks of it. Which is quite awkward to see Tinker going for a bottle. Well, not that awkward, actually. But maybe indicating that he's gonna be a lot more aggressive than I thought he would be. Templar system disconnected now, so we're gonna wait for him. Everybody making a bit more steps towards uh, their lanes. And is it a switch up for the lanes? Wind trying to rotate into the middle lane, perhaps? Not sure. We'll find out, though. I mean, Wind Runner versus Death Prophet should be fairly safe for both. I mean, Death Prophet is on the safe lane. She can hide behind her tower, and Wind Runner will not want to dive. She can get harassed, of course, by the Crypt Swarm. But I'm not sure if that would be enough to get Windrunner out of range of experience. Which would be, of course, the goal. I will just need to take a sip of water. Since there's a pause anyway, I can do that freely. Okay, you actually heard that. 
but you know, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. As uh, we're waiting for Templar Sutton to reconnect so we can actually go. Morphling versus Venomance, uh, with Venomance versus Discrimination. There's two Disables. There's a Fade Bolt. It's a lot of burst damage. Venomance would probably die. And if they initiate on any one of them, there will be one of the other that will not be initiated on that will be able to stun or telekinesis someone. That's the danger that you have when you don't have that many stuns. And there he's back. Keiko. Keiko. Let's see who's playing where. Are they gonna they're gonna switch over? They are gonna switch over. They're gonna have Windrun on the top lane with Sky and on the bottom lane. Venomancer might be staying around. Venomancer might be helping out the, the Tinker in the in the mid lane. I mean, like I said earlier, Templar Assassin is a good counter for the Tinker uh, for that. Uh, sorry, Venomancer is good to counter for the Templar Assassin, so he can be a dual lane here. Oh, on this lane, oh, this is the right call. This is the right call. Even though I am a bit anxious to know how they actually know that they were gonna switch, because I don't think they saw saw the lanes already, apart from if they looked at the stream. Even though you know, but the pause was long enough to uh, to see that. That's my point. Oh well. So for the lanes, at least Windrunner will be. In theory, okay for the uh, hard try lane. I mean, she is at least, like we saw earlier, she can hold the lane back and in, and not die all too much. And uh, we're gonna have a Venomancer who's gonna be uh, harassing the Templar Assassin, who is now up versus uh, her arch enemy Venomancer. And Templar Assassin versus uh, Venomancer. If it was a one on one, Venomancer would win. And now it's a two on one with Venomancer on one side, Templar Assassin on the other. And I do think that Tinker is gonna be uh, farming here pretty safe. Uh, farm for Windrunner will be a bit more tricky, but then again, she's getting levels. Uh, she's not going to be able to deny Chaos Knight all that much, even though she might try, but uh, it will be dangerous. Uh, we have Morphling and Lich on this uh, bottom lane who will be up for the Death Prophet. At least they'll be able to keep the lane to their court with the Lich there as well. They oh, should be careful though. Oh, there they come. Reality Rift. Here comes the stun as well. No, it's still level 1. Telekinesis who needs a Reality Rift. And oh, Windrun. Is it going to be enough? She's going to pop herself. Hide behind the tower. Hide behind in the forest. Is it going to be enough? No, it's not. She doesn't have anything. Easier way out. Going to go towards the, t the tower again. Is it going to Windrun again in 2 seconds? And the tower makes sure that... Ryan stays alive! How did he stay alive? And here comes the two seconds on, and this will maybe be first blood. Windrunner runs again, though. Is it gonna be a test of faith? No, they're still level one only. Orion doesn't have anything anymore apart from two tangos. Uh, easy way through again, and this will be a first blood. There we go. Actually, not a first blood. Eclipse get the, get the money, so it gets split. With the first blood money as well. But nice juke. Staying alive as long as she did. I was not expecting that one. Gale, once again. Lasers, rockets, just this, just, just the rest. But I don't think they can kill her, and I think they know that. But they will be able to harass her away from there. She's got four for three so far. I'm not doing that bad on the last hit. Uh, Tinker being eight for two though, it's still the double, and we're probably gonna Dyer's see that uh, continue. Is under attack. What's that creep doing there? Curious. The wind runner back on the lane, and she knows she has to be careful. And I do think that they were. Illusion. They would probably be uh, doing good if they just uh, forced Chen out of the forest. If you kill him off once, or you try to f kill him off once, he'll probably move back towards his own forest first. Yeah. Templar says it out of mana. I think she already saw the Venomancer though, so no surprise attack there. And I'm just gonna go here again because this Windrunner is looking to be the target once again. There's this time a Centaur to uh, tank up the creep wave. There's a power shot to make sure that she can stay alive. To look at easy there though. Stun, and that's a kill. Or Windrun, away, will be enough. Reality Rift, nah, that's a kill. Jen picking up the kill with his uh, Centaur, who is gonna do go down. In the meantime, Templar Assassin able to pick up the Venomancer. So that is uh, not supposed to happen for Jackpot, at least. It should not happen, in theory. I mean, two versus one, you wanna win that lane. You need to win that lane, otherwise you're like, you know, then why are you two versus one? But Venomancer, I am thinking he was overextending. Thinking too hard he could get that kill, but... He couldn't. He just couldn't. 
<laughs> nice items on the Morphling. You got five tangos. Can't have too many tangos. Uh, sorry, the branches, that is. Oh, that's quite funny. Everybody has branches, but, you know, having five is a bit overkill, perhaps. Then again, he has got 900 gold still, and there's the ring of health, so that's why he had the branches. Getting something. Oh, telekinesis, tinker in some trouble, getting sun, rockets, do some damage to the Rubik. He gets forced back, eh? actually, a tinker still goes down to the Templar chest of Rubik, staying alive on 23 HP. Chen helping out there, nobody else. Venomanta was to the bottom lane where he managed to not kill off the... Well, the Lich died, but they got an H profit, a death profit for instead, so... Has is I'm not sure about that trade. If you consider the Tinker kill on the bottom middle lane, also that was not worth uh, Venomant leaving his lane for. Uh, but all these wrong changes will make sure that Windrunner gets get some levels to get some last hits. She's five for three, well, not that many last hits, but at least she is now up versus uh, one versus one, which is a lot easier for her to do right now. And there's Death Prophet once again. Death Prophet who's eight for one with Morphling being twenty for four. Morphling topping the last hit charge uh, easily, just easily. And we have got the TPs coming in again, Chen and Rubik back into the top lane. Back in, in shape to kill off the Windrunner once again, it's probably going to be their goal. She still doesn't have any ward to uh, protect her from this, they don't, she doesn't know that, that the Chen is there, she does now know that Rubik is there, but she is going to have to back off there. The rune, uh, sorry, the ward is almost disappearing. And the rune is invisibility, will be picked up by the Tinker, who indeed got the bottle, got 500 gold. It's just on his way towards his boots to travel. It's gonna be his goal. And uh yeah, the five for one with uh Beyond Godlike actually uh ahead. I was I wasn't expecting anything else than that. I mean Morphling is a late game, we're not gonna see the dire team being all too aggressive. That's uh that proves their laning they chose for safe lanes with the wind runner there as a uh, sacrifice or wind runner. They will sacrifice the tower for that as well by the looks of it. And uh I mean they, they may just make sure that the morphling is at least winning his lane. And he is. Maybe he's not killing off the death probable too much while well, he got he got him once. And he was actually the one getting the last hit as well, so very important. Extra gold for him. Wow, uh, Invisible Tinker incoming, Shackle doesn't latch. They're gonna go for that 4 second stun, here comes the Tinker, March of the Machines. Is there gonna be more rockets, lasers, no, no, well, yes there were, Gale hits, that's gonna be the Chen. This is probably gonna be a kill, Power Shot helping out, and uh, Right Click's helping out, Test of Faith doing something before he dies, but at least uh, he dies. And it's Tinker that picks up the kill, he got his boots, 1500 gold to go for his boots to travel. Templar Assassin is now level 7, so he's gonna be ready to uh, to roam around to get some kills. Picked up a double damage when this is such a da dangerous, uh, dangerous Templar Assassin right now. Let's see where they're gonna go, how they're gonna go. Oh, Windrunner! Windrunner, where are you gonna go? Yeah, tower will go down. Here comes the Chen as well. Here comes a clef on the Ursa. Nice on cooldown. Windrunner doesn't have any mana anymore. And, and Venomancer is here, but he can't really do anything. Apart oh, he throws down a Gale, so that's all they can do. Venomancer is gone, doesn't want to help out anymore. Did what he could, but Windrunner will still die. Bam. One melt hit, and that's it. You came too close to the secrets. Well, Radiant tough luck. Tinker level 6. He is gonna go for his martial machines indeed. Gonna get harassed a bit by this Death Prophet. Death Prophet who is level 6 as well. Has got her access in ready. So they might want to go for this tower. Lasers doesn't hit because there's refraction. There's the gill though. Is it gonna be enough for you to get away? Yes it is. Ruckus will still fly. Templar hasn't taken some damage for that as well. So Death Prophet. But nothing to follow it up for. There's just 2 versus 2 and they can't really afford to uh, move in there. No bottle charges left again. And Death Prophet is actually, uh, middle tower is, under well, attack. is she going to go for the next rune? Yeah, but it, it's not going to be hers. Oh, there we go. Missed. Close, though. But no cigar. Radiant but yeah, it's, uh, it's, is under attack. it's very even, kind of. Sorry, I'm still in late game mode from the last game.
But it's very even, not because of the kills, but it's just because we have no clue what's happening just yet. Who is gonna be uh, ahead and who is not. With the morphing farmer, you can't tell. Gale hitting Chen. Marching machine. Shackle doesn't ledge, but does stop him in the marching machines for a while. Rockets will fly. One more hit needed. One more hit needed. There we go. Windrunner picking up the kill. Making sure that Theatre Tower still stands. Morphling in the meantime, continuing farming. I mean, he's just a one happy Morphling. He's got his Perseverance ready, going for Lincoln Sphere, like we saw in the previous game as well. Uh, previous game, I mean, the first game for that one, where Sky also played a Morphling, went for that Lincoln Sphere, followed up by a Manta style. No Ethereal Blade for him, by the way. Well, to be fair, Ethereal Blade is a nice item to have, but if you reverse the Templar sets and she can just refraction and you know you have a risk of doing your Ethereal Blade and not doing anything with it, and that's just something that you don't want to do. So it might not be the best item choice for him, which is uh, why he's not going to go for it for now. Lich level 5. I mean, levels for Lich doesn't really matter all that much for now. He's just helping keeping uh, Morphling in check. Getting that farm up on a Morphling 50 for 10, I mean, he's 10 last is higher than the Templar Assassin, who has been having 3 kills so far. Just pointing that out. 3 kills. Quite impressive. And of course, she's not that high on the last hits, even though she's now on 31, but the kills that do, do get, uh, well, means more. 2 seconds on Sky. Will he actually drop? Yes, he shall. Lich is gonna drop here as well, for sure. Death Prophet getting the last hit, and that is. Two, four, zero. Death Prophet will be fine. We'll be using her exorcism also on the on the tower. She's gonna be okay with her exorcism also coming towards her soon, and it will probably be in time before Tinker is there. She will be just in time. We'll be sent home actually. Yeah, it should be okay. Keep the creep wave with her as well. Tinker coming in there is not gonna be able to do anything, and he knows it too. So he backs off. He wants to get his boots to travel first. In the tower, getting harassed. Two Wildkins is gonna be able to uh, make sure the creep wave is not gonna come in or is taking damage at least. And uh, tower will drop. Second tower on the game. Second tower also for Beyond Godlike. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Templar assassin getting a medallion of courage, so we might see a Roshan going down fairly uh, soon. Chen already is going for his uh, mechanism. He's got his buckler complete if he wants to, which he now buys, so he will bring it towards him. And the Chaos Knight actually has the uh, intellect power threat, so there goes Lich. Three seconds on upon Morphling. He's morphing the strength, but will be fast enough. That's what I said about burst damage. There's so much burst damage from the Chaos Knight. Gale hit, so he'll be sent home, and he will be in time. No! Power shot! Nice! You get in the kill up on the Chaos Knight. He buys back into the game. Wow. Rage buyback. This guy, happy Morphling. Stayed alive there. As the pressure continues, actually they're sticking around for now. Four heroes here of Beyond Godlike, and they will have five soon if the Death Prophet comes there. And he, she has her exorcism also. Exorcism ready. Five heroes on the bottom lane for Beyond Godlike. And we just have two heroes moving back to base to, uh, to heal up. So they won't be there if this turns into a fight. And otherwise it will just be a free tower. There's a trap, Windrunner has to back off, still has a Windrun, and dodges that one. Good one. Melt damage uh, neglected. Fortification goes on. Uh, I don't think they'll be able to save this tower though. Still have Tinker, he's not ready just yet to do anything. He needs his boots of travel. There we go, he has his boots of travel, so we'll see a change in pace, I think. And we're gonna see... Uh, we're gonna see Beyond God like having a lot more difficulties taking down towers, I would imagine. And there goes, uh, I think, uh, they, they have the lineup to go for Roshan fairly early. I mean, they have got the Chen with Creeps that can tank up the Roshan. They've got the Medallion of Courage. Sorry for my camera movement. A bit crappy there. Exorcism. Just systematically killing off all towers on the map. Surgical position. March of the Machines this time, though. That's what I was talking about. It's going to be harder for them to push down towers because marching machines will just clear out their creeps. And they're not able to kill the tower just yet. They need more. Invisibility rune up on the Death Prophet. That's just... That, that should just be forbidden. She has exorcism up and she is invisible. That is just something that is just very annoying. But marching machines there once again. So once again, tower should be fine. Unless, unless Beyond Gaming wants to continue pushing this. I mean... They're not really fearing any massive team fight ability. 
right? No ravage, no black holes, no anything. Nice. Rubik's still a shackle. I was thinking about team fights and then decided, oh, let's see what Rubik has. Um, because there's no big ultis for him to steal. But he's still a shackle. That is actually probably the most powerful thing to steal right now. So good one for him. And uh, Tower, this one will get pressured. March of the Machines. He can do it there, but it will probably be too late. And he knows that he can't get beyond this line, so he can't do it. Tower will drop. One tower left in the game. For the dire side, that is. I mean, this tower is being taken down by the Morphling, and he got the last hit as well. He's just farming. This is what he should do. This is the hope and dreams of the dire side. And it's it's not over by all means. I mean, even if this tower drops, how are you going to push into a base when there's a Tinker with March of the Machines, there's a Windrunner with Power Shots, and there's Venomance of Force. That is three turtle heroes that are very, very hard to push through. And... Jackpot knows that. They know that they are fairly safe with that. They know that they, in theory, can give up some towers. Even even with those towers down, they still have a chance of taking this. They just need to be patient. Need to not get uh, cocky. Need to not overextend. Next guy already moving back towards the base because he knows that he wasn't safe anymore on the bottom lane. And there's Roshan. X isn't being used for that. And do they have wards? No, this is a dire ward. They're being very careful though. Just making sure that they fight only when the medallion of courage is up, perhaps? Nah, it's up almost all the time. Here comes March of the Machines. Windrunner. Windrunner her wind running herself away. And there is the fight. Delic oh wow, that's a okay. Tinker dead. That is just a burst damage. Templars isn't getting the last hit. It's gonna be Morphling reforming through. Trying to get away. Morphling into strength. Will he have enough HP to stay alive though? Will he have enough agility to morph into Sky? He will stay alive indeed. Power shot almost killing off the Templars. That's a nice shackle. Hand of God going through with the telekinesis up on the Windrunner. It will be Templars. I think that will be fine. Something got stolen. Aegis gets picked up by the Chaos Knight because he just continued doing that. Windrunner level 1 picked up by the Rubik. Not the greatest one to have, but Chaos Knight picking up the Aegis, it was all worth it. They didn't lose a single hero and managed to pick up, but the Tinker died so fast. I mean, it was one reality raid, one stun, and then, you know, bam. This is looking very good for Beyond Game, for Beyond Godlike right now. Sorry, almost said the name wrong. That's Prophet building towards the pipe, got a hood up right now. Templar says, and she's not going to go for Blink Dagger. She actually picked up a Yasha, so probably going for Manta style first. Or uh, Sanji and Yasha. Could be okay too. But I think a Manta style is totally it. Tower's still standing though. Their last tower. They have all their hopes and dreams on that. And Morphling, he is just looking for places to farm. He is hoping that he has a Link of Spear ready soon. And. I mean, with the Lincoln Spear, it, it is a very good thing to have. I mean, there's a lot of tar single target styles, especially from this guy, Chaos Knight, with the Reality Rift as well as the Chaos Bolt. It's just a combination that you don't want to get caught out in, but will it be enough for them to carry, uh, to, to start t participating in team fights? I'm not sure. Oh. Whoa! Almost one shot of Lich. That was going to be his aim, but he doesn't do it. Should have had a medallion of curse still on there, then he might have been able to do that, but... Nope. Shackle. Fletcher. Scale as well. Refraction will be up in seconds. But he's still invisible. And there goes the Refraction. Walks through March of the Machines also, but... He's gonna be fine, because here comes the rest of the team. Reality Rift as well as a four-second stall up on the Venomancer. There is no hope anymore from the Venomancer. Death Prophet taken last hit. Windrunner wind running herself away. We'll be fine. But that well, that's gonna be the end of the last year to Tower Standing. Beyond Godlike is just is just um, continuing to keep the pressure on. Wow, there we go, Tinker down once again. Real trip. There's too many stuns coming out, too many disables coming out. Lich in some trouble. Power shot got stolen, got through, and Death Prophet picking up another kill. Tinker buys back into the game. He has to because they have to save this tower. They have to save their tier three towers. Is there going to be an accident shortly? I think there is. No, 61 seconds. So that is a small comfort for Jackpot. 
And here comes the TP and Marshall Machines will stop the pressure from happening again. But look at that. That's just one kill on the Tinker and you force out a buyback and you still get half of the tower down. It is a very painful situation. We have got a Vitality Booster picked up by the Templar Assassin. Making me wonder what she wants to go for. Shackle doesn't latch. And he has a power shield. Yeah, he has. More playing. Reforming away. Good choice. Who has got his uh, ultimate orb? Almost got a complete reality. We have four seconds on up a Tinker. Gil going through. Chaos Knight in some trouble, but will still be able to help kill off the Tinker. Rumi picking up the last hit for that one. Phantasm being used. They want to go for this. Venomancer is going to get picked up. No buyback for the Tinker this time. Three seconds on up on the Windrunner. She will drop. There we go. Templar Assassin. Double kill. Windrunner buying back. Will she be able to stop this though? I don't think so. Where's the creep wave actually? There's Exorcism once again. There's no backdoor protection because the creeps were still there. So these barracks will get pressured. Beyond Swift does not hit this time. But who cares about heroes when you can kill off a barracks? And here comes the creep wave. Templar just not having fun with uh, some heroes. She wants to go for a kill, but she's going to be able to do it. Gale doesn't hit. Shackle lashes them together. Chen actually drops because of that. And there it goes. The Lich again as well. Hand of God goes in reality with Venomancer ulti, but he had the Aegis, so he should be fine again. He will be back up again. Won't be able to kill off the Venomancer, though. Or will he still with his urn? He might. No, he stays alive. Who doesn't stay alive is a Tinker once again getting picked off. Here comes the Morphling. Still doesn't have his Lincolns complete, but is looking for something. Taking so much damage from the Templar Assassin. Will morph back into his replicate. Will be fine. Chaos Knight killing off the Windrunner and, and getting a triple kill for that one. There is no buybacks once again. There is no buybacks at all. Oh, here we go. Whoa. Whoa. There we go. No buybacks for anybody up on the dire side, as you can see. All knows. Well, on the radiant side, they have buybacks. So if they do die, they will be able to buy back. If they want to, they don't really need to because nothing will be able to do, be taken away from them if they do. And this is a perfect strategy from Beyond God. Like, I mean, they knew, like, okay, you know what? We're not going to be able to fight against a, uh, a Morphling late game. So what are we going to do? We're going to own the early game. It's 20 minutes in. It's 19 to 5. And they are owning the mid-game, for sure. Early game, mid-game, whatever you want to call it. I actually notice that my voice is not as strong as it used to be. Shame. Bye, Wildkin. And, uh, well, now that the tier... Uh, well, this section, the not only the tier 3 tower, but also the barracks are, uh, are down. They want to go for, uh, for the top lane, I guess. That's where they rotate there. They have they uh, they don't even have to go back to base. I mean they have the HP, they have the mana, they have the uh, mechanism, they've got a Chen heal, they've got everything ready for them. Maybe Templar says wants to go back to base, but you know she has refraction, so she doesn't really need to either. Armlet completed upon the Chaos Knight. Wards being placed by the Radiant Side as well. And uh, is Tinker gonna be able to defend this? I am not sure. Tinker who's got a trap, he's got the slow. Um Yeah. Rockers will still fly, but it doesn't really matter. Creep wave is already there. March to the machines. More cooldown. And he doesn't really have the mana pool yet to spam it all too much. And he wants to save it until uh, Beyond Godlike wants to push in. Which is a good call to do. It's a good thing to do also. But how are you going to be able to defend this? If you just have a Tinker. A Tinker that gets picked off so fast with just a reality rift and a stun and, and he's basically dead Chaos Knight can do the whole job by himself and there goes the exorcism, they want to go in for this March of the Machines are there, power shot, pipe is up, reality rift up on the Tinker, 4 seconds stun by Tinker, you're so dead yeah, Death Prophet getting a double kill with that one. Also killed off the Lich, and there goes the Ven Venomancer as well. Morphling gonna try to make it back to base. He's got a Lincoln Spear, we'll be able to make it back to base, but... Okay, you're in the base, now what? How are you gonna defend your own barracks? Are you gonna be able to defend your own barracks? You just have the Morphling, the Windrunner. What are they gonna do? They're gonna go try to do something here. There is the Lich back up again as well, but what can the Lich do? Maybe send through his ultimate. He is level 6 after all, so he has it. And that's going to be win for the 3 seconds stun. Uh, Chaos Knight trying to do something. Go for the Lich instead. And again, Death Prophet getting the Lich. Windrunner going down to the Templar Assassin. That's going to be... I think that's going to be a GG. There's going to be Barracks going down. And that's indeed going to be the GG. So it will mean that Beyond Godlike will make it into Ghost League Division 3. After, um... 
making it through three rounds of preliminaries of three rounds of qualifiers, I could call them. And goes into Division 3 will start after the International 2 with not only Division 3, but also Division 2 and Division 1. So uh, we'll probably, uh, I'm not 100% sure about the date when it will start, but we'll give the teams uh, some time to uh, get back into their normal habitat after the International, because of course Division 1 has a lot of teams that are at the International right now. And uh, yeah, this guys are out there, we're going to wait until the throne explodes and then I will show you the end screen and then we'll uh, call it the night. Yes, we shall. Yes, we shall. So goes to League Division 3 in the special preliminaries. We followed Jackpot all the way through with they were able to take two games. They weren't able to take this last game. Beyond Gaming just uh, sorry, Beyond Godlike just too strong uh, with their with their lanes and with their with their early game presence. There we go. Throne explodes. And that is gonna be uh, oh, actually Goldcraft. Let's put it at uh, 20k. I didn't really look at that because I think it was cure. It was clear that uh, yeah, the Dire were uh, Radiant were having a uh, were at an advantage there. So this is the end screen. Oh, oh, I can do my end talk right now. Also, my name is Shiver. I'm a Ghost of Gamers caster. Please follow me on YouTube. Uh, YouTube is uh, youtubecom Gaming. So go subscribe to me there. It's actually the same extension for Twitter and for Facebook as well. So. If you want, then you could do that too. Actually, I have a website under the same name as well, shivergaming.com. There we go. If you want to find out more about uh, Gozu uh, League, you can uh, go to gozugamers.net slash Dota 2. And uh, there is a link on the side that says Gozu League Division 3 Preliminaries. And there's actually more about that, not only about Division 3, but also about Division 2, about Division 1, uh, because it's open for everybody. I mean, it's a league system. You can start at the bottom and work your way to the top. That is what these teams are going to do, and that's uh, what uh, Beyond Godlike has now made a start to. So, uh, thank you for joining me. I will be probably playing some games after this, and uh, there's nothing more to cast, so that's it. Uh, so, thank you for joining me, and have a good night if you uh, leave. And uh, until a later time.